everyone. Welcome to our bleh, to another ep- episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And today, again, folks, you guessed it, probably did as soon as you saw the screen. We are going back to the JRC, in particular, the many, many, many paged FDA executive summary for April the 24th, 2014. We are still going over the pharmacological parts of all of this. And we are starting on 4.4.1.5 alpha agonists. Now, before we get into anything, just as a reminder, I am going to make sure to put this full mammoth of a document link in the description, as well as the petition to shut down the Judge Rotenberg Center. Also, again, as always, if you have young children nearby, some of the topics that we discuss when we are discussing the JRC are extremely disturbing and certainly not for young ears. So I would definitely say some headphones are in order. Okay, without further ado, Alpha Agonists. I apologize in advance if I butcher over any words or stumble over any words. Moving on. Alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, notably clonidine and guafacine, have been investigated primarily to treat irritability in children with autism. One double-blind placebo-controlled crossover study reported an effect of transdermal clonidine in reducing self-stimulating behaviors. Frankenhauser et al. 1992. A retrospective trial of glyphosine in 80 patients ages 3 to 18 with autism spectrum disorders failed to reduce aggression in persons with pervasive developmental disorder. Posey et al. 2004. Other pharmacological interventions, amantadine, in a double-blind placebo-controlled five-week trial of amantadine in 39 children ages 5 to 19 with autism, the active medication helped reduce symptoms of irritability and aggression 47% of the children compared to 37% on placebo with reduced symptoms. King et al. 2001. Ammonia? This is going to be a new one even for me. While not technically a prescription drug, ammonia has been used as a noxious pharmacological agent in an attempt to reduce self-injurious behavior and aggressive behavior in developmentally disabled persons. Well, that's just horrifying and disturbing. God, reminds me of that bleach idea. There have been several case report studies investigating the use of ammonia to eliminate or reduce self-injurious behavior. Y'all are sick. The earliest report of use of ammonia to treat self-injurious behavior dates back to 1975. Tanner and Zeeler, 1975. God, I hope they didn't get money for that. Punishment with aromatic ammonia was used to eliminate self-injurious behavior of autistic women during experimental sessions. The effects were reversible, but were limited to experimental sessions until the staff used ammonia on the ward at all times. Oh my God, that's horrible. What the hell? Bumistar and Bumistar, 1978, described the treatment of two institutionalized children who had exhibited high rates of self-injurious behavior with aromatic ammonia inhalation on a response-contingent basis. These authors reported rapid and sustained suppression of SIB, which persisted even when the ammonia inhalation treatment was discontinued. Singh et al. 1980 conducted two experiments which investigated the effects of behavioral interventions on self-injurious behavior of two profoundly intellectually disabled girls. In the first experiment, response contingent aromatic ammonia was used as the aversive stimulus to reduce high frequency of face slapping and face hitting in a deaf and blind girl. Oh my god! In the second experiment, an overcorrection procedure was used to control jaw hitting in another girl. 
In both cases, the treatment resulted in near zero levels of self-injury. However, complete suppression of self-injury was not achieved. Dear God, what? <sighs> Ammonia? Ammonia. You know the stuff that can kill you? Where they have warnings on household cleaning products and you want to use that to stop self-injurious behavior? Um, how was that better than skin shock? What the actual fuck is wrong with people? I'm going to finish reading this, but God, there's probably going to be a separate video just to rant about that. Holy shit. Moving on. Rapoff et al. 1980 employed a combination of multiple baseline and reversal designs to examine the effects of differential reinforcement, overcorrection, lemon juice, and aromatic ammonia on the rate of self-poking in a profoundly intellectually disabled child. Both differential reinforcement and overcorrection were ineffective. Although lemon juice suppressed and stabilized the rate of poking, Aromatic ammonia produced greater suppression. That's freaking sick. What the hell is wrong with people? Okay, moving on. Adverse events associated with pharmacological interventions. Adverse events associated with pharmacological treatment, SIB, aggressive behavior in persons with intellectual impairment, autism spectrum disorder, and various developmental disabilities are similar to those seen in other patient populations for which these medications are indicated. There is no evidence in the scientific literature that patients with intellectual and developmental disabilities, God, really you're going to use this function? Okay. I'm going to try not to let out my anger at that. All right. Greater risk of developing adverse effects. The adverse event profile of antipsychotic agents used to treat SIB and aggressive behavior appear to be similar to that reported for major psychiatric disorders. McDougall et al. 2002, Matson et al. 2008, Rob 2010. These include sedation, weight gain, development of involuntary movements, e.g. tardive dyskinesia, dystonia, akathisia. Elevated prolactin levels, cardiac conduction changes, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Common adverse events associated with SSRIs include headache, hyperactive behavior, gastrointestinal effects, anxiety, sexual dysfunction, and mild weight gain. Common side effects associated with tricyclic antidepressant medications include weight gain. Not for me, it didn't. Dry mouth, sedation, in some instances, cardiac conduction changes. Opiate antagonists tend to be relatively well tolerated. In studies of naltrexone, there was one reported event of nausea and sedation. However, the patient was also taking clonidine, for which sedation is a common side effect. No serious adverse events have been reported in studies using opiate agonists for SIB and aggressive behavior. Mood stabilizers, including lithium anticonvulsant agents, often require monitoring of the cardiac function, kidney function, and routine blood tests to assess the evidence of toxicity that can be associated with several serious adverse events, including coma and death. Common, less serious adverse events associated with mood stabilizers included sedation, changes in appetite and weight, and skin rash. The major adverse event associated with alpha agonist medications is sedation. Since these medications were developed primarily for the treatment of hypertension, studies have reported some patients who experienced non-life-threatening hypertension. Rub 2010. So, since we covered this little section here, we talked about alpha agonists, basically... Two, one was a medication, the other is goddamn ammonia. Why they think that it's okay to use a product that causes household cleaning items to have a warning label on them, especially in regards to inhalation, but you're going to go ahead and 
force people with disabilities to inhale because it might stop them from injuring themselves. When, if you inhale too much ammonia, you comes at a risk of death. Really? God, hell is wrong with people. <sighs> we also talked about adverse effects associated with the pharmacological interventions, including all the types that we have gone through thus far. In regards to this, I get it. A lot of people are worried about the adverse effects of medicine. However, going through all of that and then comparing that to the adverse effects of that electroshock, I'm sorry, but I would take those adverse effects to the skin shocks any day. We still don't know at this point the long-term damage that what the center has done, the kids have done. We do know that Andre McCollins, who was well on his way to being an independent individual once a few years went by, went from being on a single medicine to being stuck in state care for the rest of his life. The psychological impact on him, the physical impact on him, he doesn't even move the same way as he did before, according to his mother, Cheryl McCollins. So we are still learning more as each year passes the damage and adverse effects of skin shock. It is not safe. Do not buy the Judge Rotenberg hype. Just wanted to get that out there. Now, I don't want to get into this next section because we are starting a new one in behavioral. So before we get into that, what we are going to do is watch another video. And yes, I like to see how many views my videos get. I'm a little vain. Just a little. So, let's go ahead and pull up the video and we'll finish up for today. Now, while I am pulling everything up, I do want to let everyone know that in spite of it being Memorial Day, I am going to be going ahead and setting up <clears throat> to do a live. It has been two weeks after all, and I don't know just who all I will be able to get to come to the stream, but we are certainly going to be doing our best here. I think hopefully at least Zod will be on. It's going to be a little bit labor later than it would normally be. I'm going to go ahead and set it for five just because it is going to be the weekend. So that's going to be five central time. It's going to be six eastern standard time. It's going to be 11 o'clock UK time. I will definitely make sure to get the notices out here as soon as I finish up with this video. Okay, so let's finish this up here. Actually, you know what? I am interested in what the BBC has to say. I didn't realize that they had something here. Oh, 23 minutes. Maybe another time. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to watch Shocking Children's School Shock, Judge Rutenberg Psychology Mind Control Report. Oh, hold yeah. on. That's a little long. I don't want you all to have to stay on here another 23 minutes. I was looking for a shorter vid. And I don't have an edit button, so...
Okay, so this is coming from actually Greg Miller. So we are going to go ahead and watch this. Tonight at 360 Follow, a new push to shut down a controversial school that we first reported on back in 2006. It's called, called the Judge Rodenberg Center in Canton, Massachusetts. It's different from any other school in the country, and you're going to see why in just a moment. He was shocked and restrained after refusing to take off his coat. <laughs> It doesn't get any easier to see it. It really doesn't. I never signed up for him to be tortured, terrorized, and abused. I had no idea, no idea that they tortured the children in the school. That was the beginning of McCollin's ordeal. As he shocked for refusing to take off his coat, McCollin's was then restrained face down for seven hours a helmet on his head and shocked 31 times for tensing his body and yelling. Dramatic video of New York teenager Andre McCollins restrained face down, a helmet on his head, screaming for help. Judge Rotenberg Center calls it treatment. It never gets any easier to see it. Cheryl McCollins did get Andre to Children's Hospital that day, where he was diagnosed with acute stress response caused by the shock. The jury also heard her testify about watching the video and hearing staff members laughing while their son was on the floor. Students are attached to electrodes sometimes as long as 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sometimes for years at a time. Each student wears four or five devices on their arms, legs, and sometimes torsos. The Rotenberg Center is the only place in the country to use this kind of shock treatment. Now scrutiny is also coming from the United Nations expert on torture. It raises a very serious concern. I mean, a passage of electricity through anybody's body is clearly associated with pain and suffering. Now, it depends on the level and the, the time uh, and, uh, and whether there's any rationale for it. Juan Mendez is the UN's special rapporteur on torture. The UN's top authority on torture says the prohibition on torture is absolute and has called on the Obama administration to launch an investigation into the school. To be frank, I was shocked. In your opinion as an expert on torture, is it indeed torture? Yes. No question. I think I have no doubts about it. It is inflicted in a situation where the victim is powerless. And, I mean, a child in a restrained chair being then subjected to electric shocks, you know, how, how more powerless can you be? Would this be permitted if it were a convicted terrorist? No, of course not. This all started with that disturbing video of a student at the Judge Rotenberg Center in Canton restrained in shock dozens of times. It's video the school fought hard to keep from the public eye. And now it's clear why. That video having a big impact from the State House all the way to the United Nations. That's the burns on Andre's skin. Remember that it said it didn't cause damage? Well, there you have it. There's the damage. So I know that's shown some of the things that we have already gone over before, especially in that larger compilation video that we reviewed together when I first started doing these videos. But since it's from Greg Miller, remember he was the former person who used to work for the JRC who's been very much fighting against it and just kind of really opened the doors to what exactly was going on there. I wanted to go ahead and take a look at his video. So that's all we got for today, folks. Now, we here at Spill of Tea do appreciate you taking time this afternoon to uh, hang out with us. Now, to close out, we don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. We do appreciate your time this afternoon. And we here at Spilling Tea hope you have... A wonderful Memorial Day. Bye-bye.